wanted to tell everyone's story. With unbearable sorrow. But your own. Don't you see, Susie? I was programmed for you. <laughs> what if I were to tell you that there is a man alive today who may have fathered over a thousand children? What kind of man would do that? From new seasons of hit show Emily in Paris and Only Murders in the Building to Sunny, a dark comedy about grief and robots, there's something for everyone on the small screen over July and August. And Deepti Laurence here to take us through it. Hi, Deepti. Hi, Olivia. Well, let's start with Lady in the Lake. This is a period crime drama from Apple TV Plus starring Natalie Portman. Yeah, that's right. It's based on the best-selling author Laura Lippmann's 2019 novel of the same name. Uh, the series takes us deep into the African, American and Jewish communities in 1960s Baltimore. Uh, Natalie Portman plays a Jewish housewife who uh, becomes a, kind of an investigative journalism, a journalist after the parallel deaths of a young Jewish girl and Cleo, a black woman played by Moses Ingram. OK, well, let's take a look at Lady in the Lake and hear from that actress, Moses Ingram. Before any of this began, I saw you. Alive. I was Cleo Johnson. But in my death, I became the lady in the lake. Well, it's beautiful to see a woman on such a complicated ride. I think one thing I really hope that people walk away with from this, this experience is um, to have a little more grace. I think if we looked at Cleo on paper, we'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe she did all of these things. But people make these decisions for a reason when they're forced to. Um, and so I hope people remember that. My wife has a lot of things. There's one thing that she not. That's foolish. So it certainly looks pretty slick. What did you think, Titi? Look, I'll be honest, I was a little bit skeptical in the beginning because it seems to be quite a trend now, you know, every A-lister joining their name, a producer and a starring of some kind of limited series on streaming, it's really the thing everyone wants to do. It made me think a lot of Kate Winslet in oh, Mayor yeah. of Easttown a few years ago, but like that series, this was a pleasant surprise. It's gripping, it's well acted, the, the cast is really good, uh, and it very delicately tackles a host of issues, societal racism, gender equality, women's rights, uh, and roles in both communities and the parallels and differences. And I love the fact that you its you have two leads. You have Natalie Portman's Maddie, who's seeking her own liberation from the constraints of domestic life. And you have Moses Ingram, who is this uh, black mother hustling to provide for her kids, whose uh, idealism is at odds with the very murky under, underbelly of politics. So it's very interesting. Um, and in the end, it kind of watches like a film with several parts. So it's very interesting how the format lends itself to almost like a, a film-like experience. Mm. Mm, visually, even, it looks uh, quite cinematographic exactly. in its uh, style. Well, also from that same streaming platform, there's a dark comedy coming out called Sunny. This stars Rashida Jones, and it takes us deep into what it's really like being a foreigner in Japan. Yeah, and this also is based on a book called The Dark Manual uh, by Irish-born, Japanese-based author Colin O'Donnell. Now, Sunny the Robot is sent to Rashida Jones's grieving character Susie after uh, the presumed deaths of her husband and son in a plane crash. The two, uh, so uh, Sunny and Susie, will inadvertently uncover the dark mystery behind those deaths. Uh, Rashida Jones of Parks and Recreation and The Office uh, is the star cat as the star of the show but this show also has a near all Japanese cast including Hidetoshi Nishijima one of Japan's most well-known actors who's in his first uh, US production this show was also shot in Japan and it tackles uh, grief but also the dangers of AI and social isolation can I help you I have a gift Susie-san. I'm Sunny. Bring it in. Okay. Robots can be of great comfort. I don't want a robot. I hate robots. Sunny was created by your husband. She's very on guard, and she's also she's also decided she's going to be committed to a life of isolation, um, and she does that. She recommits many times, kind of through the course of the the, the past in the show and the present in the show where she moves to Japan to be isolated and then she meets somebody she loves and she can no longer be isolated. And then she loses that person and then she's isolated again. Did you really know my husband? 
I don't know. My first memory is meeting you. There are so many people who are isolated, and who's going to take care of them when their parents are gone? So there's no solution yet. This is an ongoing issue that Japan is facing. So this show, in a way, is also a story about being lonely, being isolated, and when it's seen by the world, I hope it makes you think about what it means to be isolated. So there's a blend there of Japanese high tech and also dramatic storytelling. What was your feeling overall? You know, um, I, I think The Guardian had the best headline about this show when I read uh, their review. A series that sounds really crap, but it's actually <laughs> very good. Good uh, news. Uh, and I think that really sums it up. The pitch maybe not be very, it may not be very appealing, but uh, it's very, it's a great show. Um, the series, like the book, is tackling that relationship between humans and machines in Japan. There is one big difference. In the book, Sunny is male, and in the series, the robot is female. It's beautifully filmed. You have lots of you know, shadowy cinematography, dim lit lights, that kind of thing. Um, lovely production note as well, that whole robotics company scenes, those scenes were shot in the Kyoto International Conference Center, mm. where the UN framework on climate change was signed in 1997. So a nice ah, little historical footnote there. Uh, Rashida jo Jones brings gallows humor to this show, and I think that's what really elevates it. Um, it's She's hilarious, but also quite sad. Uh, it's not very fast paced, though, so you will need patience with this one. OK, slow burn at that one. Yes, exactly. Well, to two, true crime now, Netflix's The Man with 1,000 Kids, about a serial sperm donor, donor from the Netherlands, and this has gathered a lot of outrage on social media, I should imagine. Yeah, it's gotten a lot of people talking about this. This follows Dutchman Jonathan Jacob Meyer, a former musician, teacher, crypto trader who worked as a private sperm donor. Uh, this three-part docuseries is recounted kind of in flashbacks by some of the couples who procreated thanks to Meyer, only to discover that he had fathered hundreds of children uh, around the world. It's obviously a total violation of sperm donor rules. It's also very dangerous, and this is what they mm. explain, because it increases the risk later of these children unwittingly uh, breeding uh, or uh, committing incest. Uh, so, yeah, a, a very kind of scary docuseries. Quite chilling. OK, well, let's take a look then at the man with 1,000 kids. We're totally sold. I'm ready to have beautiful babies. Nine months later, I had a baby boy. But that wonderment was totally ripped from us. She said, your donor is quite famous. This guy is a serial donor. How many? How many children do you have now? It was a shock. He lied. There weren't four families or five families. There were already hundreds. It's become an addiction for him. He actually can't stop himself. It's a worldwide problem. He has no intentions of stopping. Why are you putting so many children on this earth? So, Olivia, you know, the series has shocked a lot of viewers. Um, Myers, uh, Myers says he's actually planning to sue Netflix for defamation because he really wasn't uh, consulted on this series. Mm. Um, he gave an interview to the British Daily, The Independent, in which he tried to put forward his side of things. He admits in the article uh, having uh, gotten uh, carried away, but he says... A bit he, of an understatement. <laughs> a bit of an understatement, but he says he definitively stopped donating in 2019 and always set out to do this with the purest of intentions to help couples uh, procreate. But it definitely sheds a lot of light on the lack of uh, regulations around private sperm, sperm yeah. donors. Fascinating. Well, next, Emily in Paris is back, of course, uh, this August, just in time for the Olympics. Probably not competing, though. No, not competing. Uh, our favourite American in Paris is back for a fourth season of Parisian hijinks. Uh, Netflix also continuing with this infuriating tactic of making fans wait. So the first half of season four is released in August and the second half is released released in September. Uh, season four uh, opens where season three left off with Emily's love triangle, unexpected wedding and pregnancy. Uh, the uh, Agence Grato faces a personnel shakeup while Emily's best friend Mindy and her band are uh, prepping for Eurovision. Uh, this season's shoot also got a special visitor, the first, uh, the French first lady Brigitte Macron apparently uh, w w did attend a, a day of the shoot as well. Oh, a secret fan. Well, OK, let's take a look at this little snippet teasing that new season. 
three words to describe Emily in Paris season four. If I could describe season four in three words right now. Let me think about that. Vulnerable. Messy. Je vais dire uh, chaotic. Je vais dire, je vais dire amour. Now, whether you love the show or whether you love to hate the show, its impact on Parisian and French tourism is undeniable. A study by the French National Cinema Body in January this year found that 79% of tourists in France said they had seen the se they had uh, seen a series set in France. The most popular ones being Emily in Paris and Lupin. This is twice as many as in 2018. It's even uh, known as there's a term for it. It's called set jetting, traveling to the filming locations of your favorite TV, TV series or films. Wow. Well, I can confirm that that's definitely happening here in Paris. <laughs> Next, this August, we'll be getting a fourth series of season, sorry, of Emmy Award winning show Only Murders in the Building. Yeah, that's right. And Only Murders in the Building has been nominated for the 2024 Emmy Awards that'll take place on September 15th. It's among the top nominees uh, with uh, about uh, 21 nominations. The other two big shows of these award season of this award season will be The Bear, the Chicago kitchen drama. Mm. And uh, Shogun, the feudal Japan uh, series that's garnered a lot of critical acclaim, acclaim picked up uh, 25 uh, M M Emmy nominations. Now, uh, only Murders in the Building, it's a fun, irreverent, satirical Hollywood whodunit stars Selena Gomez, Martin Short, and Steve Martin, uh, an improbable crime-solving trio. Season four looks at the murder of Steve Martin's character, stunt double played by Jane Lynch. This show has had a revolving door of uh, A-list stars, Meryl Streep, Paul Rudd, and this season, Zach Galifianakis, Eugene Levy, and Eva Longoria set to uh, guest star in this new season. Ah, oh, sounds like a lot of fun. Well, thank you very much for that roundup, DPT. Let's leave you then with a peek of season four of Only Murders in the Building. Otherwise, do keep up with the latest from the big and small screen here on Arts24. We'll see you next time. They don't recognize you. No, they don't know you.